Hi, I'm Paul Holt, CEO of Class on Demand. Class on Demand creates the best training in the world for digital content creators. The Class on Demand website is loaded with free high-res video tutorials on today's most popular software products. What you're about to see is a segment from a complete tutorial. When it's over, I'll tell you how to purchase the complete training at a discounted price. So enjoy today's free lesson, and I'll see you at the end. We want to browse for backgrounds. What I want you to do is go back to your project media folder that I gave you and open that up and go in and select the one that's called baseball card. This is kind of a neat background, okay? This is kind of cool. It's just a guy sitting there. Now this would be your kid or your student or whatever you want it to be. And this is a kind of a cool beginning of a background, all right? So that'll be your actual background image. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to go to buttons. Let's go ahead and browse for them. We want to select our embroidered baseball cap Targa. Notice how it updated this. We now have six images. It needs to make sure that it's updated. Now this was great for updating if you restart the program, but if you're adding images like we just did in Photoshop, you have to make sure that you go back and select it. It's not going to update your selection palette here automatically. Now we have six images to choose from, and of course we want the baseball hat that's got the alpha channel on. So let's go ahead and grab that and pull that over. And now this is going to become our button. We're going to go ahead and grab this. We're going to hold down our alt button, which of course locks our aspect ratio, and we're going to make our buttons quite a bit smaller, okay? We're going to go ahead and drag this up here like this. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Hold down alt. Great. Now what we're going to do is let's just make three buttons here real quick. The easiest way to do that is to select your first button and do a control C, which is copy. Okay, You could copy it down here, of course, as well, using your buttons down at the bottom. But I want you to get in the habit of using shortcut keys because it's a lot easier and a lot faster to use. So what we did was we copied it, and now what I want to do is I want to do a paste, which is control V. We can just do it right in the same spot. And notice how it offsets a little bit so you can see that you've actually got a second button. Let's go ahead and drop that down here. Very nice. We can line these up using the, uh, the safety markers on the, on the left-hand side. So let's just put it right in the center there. Let's click on this one, put our dots right in the center, and now we know they're vertically aligned. And let's go ahead and create one more by doing Control-V again. Remember, it's in your cut buffer, so you can make as many copies as you want. Control V, that's paste. Let's do one more here. Right about, right about there. Now if you want fine movement, remember, use your up and down arrows, left and right, on your keyboard, and that'll get you pretty close to where you need to be, right there. And that's a little bit finer movement. So let's just say that those are the three buttons that we want to use for this. The next thing that we want to do is we actually want to create some text for what those chapters are. Okay, I'm going to add a text field here because we want to um, add some text to describe what our buttons are going to be used for. I'm going to select right in here. And let's just make this a little bit bigger. Select in here. Make our font just slightly bigger. And we'll select our font after we type something in. So uh, we'll click inside the box and we'll say first inning. We're going to go ahead and make this a little bit like this so it doesn't wrap automatically. Let's just put this right next to it. Let's just go ahead and go like this. First inning. Let's select that. Control C. Click another text field down here. We're going to click right inside of it do a control V. Now what the reason that I copied the first inning is because I want all of the chapters to use the same font and the same size. This is a quick way of working around it because these fonts over here have a predetermined size. Theoretically I could save these fonts and put them in my custom and favorite fonts but in this particular case the quickest way to do it is just to paste the uh, copy of the original one. So this time I'm going to do second inning Let's go ahead and move this down a little bit. Move this right next to it. Looks pretty good. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing down here next to this guy. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And I'll go ahead and do a control V. We'll change this to third inning. Let's actually just say the winning run. How's that? Let's just have some fun with it. So this might be your uh, your son or daughter scoring the winning run or making the big home run or whatever it might be. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now the one thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that these are attached to the hat in case we want to move them around. Hold down the first one, click on it, hold down control, and now you've selected both of them. You want to link them together with your little group button. And the reason that you want to do that is if you start to move one, They'll move both now, okay? And that's exactly what we want to do. So let's put that back where we had it. Let's do the same thing with this hat. Hold down Control, select Second, link it. Hold this guy down, hold down Control. Good. And now they're both linked together. So once again, when you select them, you'll see that all of the handles come up. That's to prove to you that they've been linked, all right? Now, the one thing that we need to do is we need to define our buttons, okay? So let's go back to buttons, and we need to select the first one. Right now it's saying that it's not a button. It's just some sort of a text file, in essence, on the background image. We want it to be a button. We're going to call it a, a normal button, okay? This could be a thumbnail button, a previous button, next button, or a root button, but in this particular case, we just want it to be a normal button that goes to chapters, okay? The thumbnail buttons are a special type of button that we're going to talk about next, but a normal button is the type that we're going to use for all of these guys. Now, the other thing that we want to do is we want to say, what sort of a highlight style? Do we want to have a box around the whole thing? Do we want it to follow the shape? When we select something, do we want it to follow the shape? You can see like we're getting a little bit of a, of a red outline there. Now, I don't like the red very much because of the fact that it's a red hat. So if we want to change it, okay, we want to change it to a different color so we can definitely tell that that's highlighted. So let's go ahead and uh, let's just select kind of like a yellow color. So that'll be the highlighted color. And you can see what it gives us right now. So let's go down here. We want to say normal button, select the third one, and this is a normal button. And there's your highlight, great. We're now done with this. We could be adding more text on here if we wanted to, whatever we wanted to do on this, but it's basically how to create a, a real basic menu uh, with custom buttons. So let's go ahead and close this. Hello again. So if you thought this lesson was valuable, imagine what you could learn from the complete training product. So please visit our website at classondemand.com to order the training and to also view our entire product catalog. When you're checking out, enter the product code below for a 10% discount. It's that simple. So once again, on behalf of Class On Demand, I'm Paul Holtz. Thanks for watching.